Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli back out here in the shop. And guess what? I've got a good secret one for you today. And I want to focus on a lure, a style of lure that when things get tough, I mean the ultimate tough conditions, this is a sleeper. And today in the shop, we're going to be talking about hair jigs, hair jigs for extreme tough conditions. And without a doubt, when things get extremely tough in the winter for cold water conditions, that thing is a killer. The great thing is all these techniques I'm going to talk about, they work in the other extreme too, which is the extreme heat of the summer. But when things get cold, wintertime fishing, as a last resort, there's no better choice than a hair jig. And for years and years and years, I carried these in a box in my boat called the panic box. And what I figured out is these things were so good when I got desperate, I had to give it their own box. And I literally carry this box of hair jigs when I know fishing's gonna be tough. And when it's cold water, I'm talking about water that's mid 40s or cooler, I'll always have this hair jig box in my boat. And there's something about a hair jig that still produces when nothing else does. Just to give an example of what I'm talking about here is when you throw traditional finesse techniques in cold water extreme conditions. I'm talking about a Ned rig, a drop shot, a finesse swim bait, a little tiny four inch worm. When you throw that stuff and you can't get bit, that's time to pull out the hair jigs. This really is a bait that will catch them when nothing else will, okay? So I wanna go over with you, I wanna talk about the hair jigs themselves, the material. We're gonna talk a little bit about a modification that I make. And then we're gonna go a little to rods and reels, and then finally, the three ways that I fish this bait, okay? So let's start with the hair jigs themselves. And you know, when I open my hair jig box, you're gonna see one commonality. You're gonna see one commonality, and that is the hair that I carry in this box, material-wise, you're gonna see two types of material, okay? The first one you're gonna see is you're gonna see uh, marabou. You're gonna see marabou jigs. Uh, these are a little VMC. This is a little VMC marabou jig. Um, these are great. They, I carry them from a 32nd of an ounce all the way up to a quarter. Uh, the 16th and the 8th ounce are my favorite sizes. But these are marabou hackle. And I love marabou because it's, it's very breathable. It's very fluid, right? And on two of these techniques I talk about, the marabou excels as you work that bait. So I love marabou. And then the second material you're gonna see, and this is an interesting material. A lot of people sort of forgot about this one, is synthetic. Hair jigs made out of synthetic fibers. And the great thing about hair jigs made out of synthetic hackle is that they're super buoyant. They're super buoyant. Synthetic has this floating quality to it. So on one of these techniques I'm talking about, you'll hear me in a second talking about it, when you wanna keep that hair jig higher in the water column and almost like suspend, barely falling, synthetic's the way to go, right? Because it has buoyancy to it. So hackle material, love marabou, love synthetic. Um, head style I wanna talk about. And in fact, I'll open up this VMC jig to give you an idea of jig head style. And when I'm fishing 
uh, a little marabou jig. I like two different uh, eyelet styles. And the first one I like, and you're going to see it on this little VMC, is a little bit of an angled eyelet. And if you look at it, it's angled and it's at about a 60 degree, okay? You're gonna see that little line tie right there, angled at about a 60 degree. And it's perpendicular to the hook point, right? It's a flat eye, okay? And when I'm fishing this little marabou hair around forms of cover, specifically rocks, uh, logs, you know, physical cover, where I'm creeping it over that cover, that 60 degree flat eye perpendicular to the point, think about it, it rides over it better. The pull point is a little different, so it actually rides over that cover. So I like the 60 degree flat eyes, but I also carry the hair jigs with a 90 degree, right? Look at it, it's 90 degree inline tie which means the eye, instead of being flat, perpendicular to the point, now it's in line, okay? So a 90 degree in line, line tie. And that style jig head is a lot better for swimming it, keeping that hair jig horizontal. And you're gonna see this when I talk about some of these techniques, keeping it horizontal, swimming it, or, or jigging it in open water. It's keeping it straight. It's really key. So cover situations, crawling it around the bottom over rocks, logs, seawalls, brush, 60 degree flat eye, more open water, more swimming techniques, sparse cover, no cover, a 90 degree inline, okay? Jig sizes, we talked about it. I like from little itsy bitsy, 32nd, 16th of an ounce, all the way up. And then on color, you know, I keep it really basic in my hair jig fishing. You're gonna see that in this box. It's basically only four tones in this entire box of hair jigs. I have black and brown, which are my dark tones. My black is looking like larva, like leeches, like little nymphs on the bottom. I've got my browns perfect crawfish imitations, browns with maybe a little green in it. Then of course I've got my white hair jigs, white hackled hair jigs. Anytime I'm imitating bait fish, shad, owlwife, herring, shiners, minnows, I've got my white. Last but not least, you're gonna see some yellowish chartreuse tones in here. And whenever I'm trying to imitate small perch or little panfish, I go with that chartreuse or that yellow tone. So basically, four, five colored hair jigs, that's all you need. So color selection, I'm keeping it real simple. All right, now I wanna get into the rod and reel, and then we're gonna talk about these techniques, how to fish this hair. You know, on rod and reel, the main thing I want you to think about when selecting the proper rod, reel, and line is how subtle these hair jigs are, right? They're marabou, they're synthetic. Look at it, it's a 16th of an ounce, it's little. So throwing the lure and feeling that little lure are really key in selecting the right rod and reel. So I want you to use a longer finesse spinning rod, a longer rod than what you would use for a Ned rig, a shaky head, a drop shot. We're gonna go longer. And the main reason we're going with a longer rod is to be able to cast that little light hair jig really, really far, right? Be able to get a 40, 60, 70 foot cast with a little bait. The longer the rod, the longer the cast. So I want you to use at least a seven foot four rod all the way up to eight feet. Uh, the two that I love are, these are Ike Abu Garcia rods. We make a 7.6 medium, which is unbelievable, and we make a 7.8 medium. And that 7.8 is really my ideal hair jig rod. 
And it's got that medium tip, right? You want it to have flex. And that medium tip is going to let you load the rod and launch that bait. It's also going to come into play on the hook set. We're going to talk about that in a second. So seven, four to eight foot medium action spinning rod is what you want. On reel, I like to go to a larger size spinning reel. So a 30 or even a 40 size spinning reel. This one right here is the Abu Garcia Revo Ike spinning. This is in the 30 size, okay? Larger reel, because you're gonna hear it in a second. We want the maximum amount of line on there and we wanna be able to cast it far. So the bigger the reel, the further the cast, okay? Now we're gonna talk about line. On line, when I'm fishing a hair jig, I'm going lighter on everything. So I would say 90% of the time, I use a braid to fluorocarbon leader. And the reason I do that with a hair jig is that casting distance, right? Braid has no stretch. So light braid, you could throw it a mile. Also, when I set the hook, when that lure is out there 40, 60 foot in front of me and I set the hook, I like the fact that braid has zero stretch. So light braid to a light fluorocarbon leader. And I like to use eight or 10 pound mainline braid. And I'm really a big fan of the eight pound Berkley X9. I like to use it in white. White's gonna help me see that braid. And a, a few of those bites are subtle so I can watch the line. And then from that eight pound braid, I go to a really long leader of fluorocarbon. And I'm talking about four to eight pound tests Four sounds light, I know, but when it's tough and the water's clear, I'll go to four. But six pound Berkeley Trilene 100% fluorocarbon, long leader, okay? When I'm using hair jigs, a long leader. So a normal leader length might be 12 to 18 inches, maybe a foot, maybe two foot. But when I'm using a hair jig, I'll use a three, four, even five foot leader of six pound fluorocarbon. I still have that braid main line. It's gonna help me cast, it's gonna help me get rid of that stretch. But that long fluorocarbon leader, that six, four pound, six pound leader is gonna help this thing fall naturally. Just fall real subtly as I reel it. It's just gonna let that bait move. And that's real key to this hair jig, okay? So longer spinning rod, medium action, bigger spinning reel, 30 or 40 size and light braid to a light, long fluorocarbon leader, okay? All right, we're getting there. We talked about the material, the sizes, the colors. Uh, we talked about the rod, the reel, the line. Now I wanna get into the three primary techniques that I'm gonna use with this hair jig. And at the end, I'll sprinkle a bonus one in there for you. Um, the best way that I like to fish a hair jig is from the middle of the water column to the bottom, depending where the fish are at. So the great thing about these three techniques is you're gonna see that we effectively cover the mid column all the way to the bottom. Let's start on the bottom, uh, and I love this one for when the fish are relating to the bottom and super lethargic, okay? When we talk cold water, wintertime fishing, it's perfect for that. I've caught fish on this hair jig in 37, 38 degree water. When I land the fish, he's got mud on his belly. They're laying on the bottom. And when you get in that scenario and your normal finesse techniques aren't working, this is gonna shine. Remember, a lot of the time for this bottom bouncing technique, I'm fishing around some form of cover, uh, gravel, chunk rock, pea, uh, uh, pea gravel, uh, boulders, um, on some tidal water. It's gonna be wood, isolated wood, uh, concrete, sea walls up on the Hudson River at the base of sea walls. And when I'm fishing this hair jig on the bottom around cover, I go with that VMC Marabou 60 degree line tie perpendicular to the hook, flat eye, okay? And remember what we said, that's gonna come through cover better, and this is marabou. 
And when I'm fishing that hair jig on the bottom, I want the lifelike action of marabou. And marabou sinks a little further. Doesn't have that buoyancy of synthetic. So when I want it on the bottom, I'm going marabou. And I'll make that long cast out to where those fish are at. I'm going to let this hair jig sink. I'm going to let this hair jig sink. Fuck, hold on. Let me, let me kill this because it's going to do it again. Sorry about that, Justin. No, you're good, man. I'm, I'm still rolling. So uh, I, oh, I did turn it off. Okay. I'm going to let this hair jig sink on semi-slack line. So after I make that long cast, I'm letting it fall and keeping a slight bow in my line. That subtle fall, every once in a while, even for bottom feeding fish, you'll have one and come up and cigar it, okay? So a long cast, letting it fall on semi-slack line, but once it hits the bottom, all I'm gonna do is drag this thing really, really slow and keep it on the bottom. When those fish are relating to the bottom, when they're smacked down on that, on that floor, I want to keep that hair jig on the bottom. So I let it sink to the bottom and I start this very slow lift from about three o'clock up to about 12. Just barely lifting it up. And when I get to about 12, I drop my rod tip I throw in slack by just bowing, a little bit of slack. And that hair jig, if it's lifted up off the bottom a little, it'll fall back down and hit the bottom. So on the first retrieve for hair jigs, extreme conditions, I'm leaving this thing on the bottom, going from three to 12, throwing in pauses. When I throw in that pause, not only does it let it hit the bottom, but it stops, and when it hits the bottom, I let it pause for a second, and guess what that marabou does? It breathes. And a lot of bites come as you drag, get to 12, you throw slack into it, you let it hit the bottom, you pause for a second, and when you go back to lift up, he's on there. Really be a line watcher, okay, on this bottom technique. Watch your line feel. If anything feels different, set the hook. But when we're using a hair jig, Dude, it's not, a, it's not a flipping jig, right? It's not punching. We're not gonna jack it with all our might. Because you're using this longer medium action rod, seven, four to eight foot, right? The seven, eight rod's great one. All I'm gonna do with that braid and fluorocarbon is when I lift back up and I feel weight or I feel something going or I see my line jump, all I'm gonna do is lean back and start reeling. It's called a reel set. So the great thing about these little jigs with these little hooks is guess what? You don't have to jack the hook. You just sort of reel into it and set, okay? So the first technique with hair, 60 degree line tie, using the marabou, keeping it on the bottom. Very, 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 very key, okay? Number two, and this one is the technique on hair jigs that so many guys for so long tried to keep secret and I'm letting the cat out of the bag. And technique number two for when I'm using these little marabou jigs, these little synthetic jigs, is to steady wind it. Straight retrieve. And it's the most unbelievable thing because it's a lot like how you would retrieve a crankbait or a chatterbait. It's that same steady wind and that little bait coming straight through with just this very neutral movement is unbelievable, okay? For this second technique, because now we're in open water, we're off the bottom, we're from a foot off the bottom to halfway up in the water column, I go to the 90 degree line tie, to the 90 degree line tie, and I like synthetic or marabou for this technique. Play around a little bit. Marabou has a little more breathing. Synthetic will help you keep it high. But the second technique is for fish that are off the bottom. And it's just gonna be a steady retrieve. So I'm gonna make that same long cast out there. I'm gonna let it hit. 
I'm going to count it down to the level of the fish. If I see that bait and those fish on my graph five foot down and 10 foot of water, I count to five. One, two, three. And as I let it fall, it's on semi-slack line, four, five. And as soon as I get to that count, my second's going to match my depth. I just start this slow, steady retrieve. And it's just straight. I'm not pumping, I'm not moving my rod. I'm keeping my rod at about one, two o'clock, and I'm making a slow, steady retrieve. About every 10 winds, I throw a pause into it, I bow a little, and I pick it back up. It's a lot, it's a lot like fishing a spy bait for you spy bait anglers. And this jig with this 90 degree line tie keeps it horizontal, keeps it straight, right? Just barely moving through. And as you stop, the hair, the hackle expands, it flutters a little, and then it gets back to that even wind. In extreme conditions, when they won't hit a crankbait or a chatterbait, or even a spy bait, the subtleness of that slow and steady hair jig, 90 degree line tie, they can't stand it and they want to eat it. Okay, so my second technique is called the steady wind. Two o'clock, one o'clock rod position, steady wind, a pause about every 10 cranks. Same thing, when you feel a bite or you see your line jump, don't jack it. Just back in, just use your body back up to it and reel into the fish, right? That sweep step, hook set, okay? So number two, that slow, steady wind, it's good for that little above the bottom to middle of the water column, a 90 degree line ties key, marabou or synthetic for that one. All right, number three, last but not least, we're getting to a real sleeper, and this is one I don't even like to talk about, but I'm giving it to you, and that is using a hair jig like you would a suspending jerkbait. And for this technique on the hair jigs, we're gonna exclusively use hair jigs that have synthetic hair. And remember what we said about synthetic. It's super buoyant, it's very light, it has, it has this nature where it wants to keep the bait high, even on that light fluorocarbon, it wants to keep it high. And this thing, a 16th, an eighth, even a 32nd, here's the sink rate on this kind of jig, you ready? Look at that, it sinks about that slow. Obviously water temperature, the weight of that jig head depend, but it's a very slow sink hair jig because of that synthetic, okay? So on this last one, I call it jerking a hair jig, just like, just like fishing a suspending jerk bait, it's very much the same. We're gonna go with a 90 degree line tie, and synthetic hackle. And I really like those lighter sizes. 32nd, 16th, up to about an eighth. Same rod, same reel, same line, same theory. We're gonna bomb cast it out there, past where we see the fish. But this one is excellent for suspended fish. We're talking about middle of the water column or fish that are feeding up. Think about when a suspending jerk bait is dominant cold water, when fish are suspended, when fish are lethargic and they're feeding up to get a bait, that's when this third method, jerking the hair jig, is gonna be the deal. Long cast with that synthetic hair jig, hits the bottom. Once again, just like the straight reel, we're gonna count it down to level the fish. One, two, three, four, five, however deep they are, six, seven, count the 10, eight, nine, 10, boom, we're there, we're in 10 foot of water. But this time, instead of that slow, steady wind, we're gonna fish it just like a suspending jerk bait in cold water. So when I get to that level, I'm gonna start reeling, and I start a rhythm or a cadence. And the colder the water, the slower the cadence, the warmer the water, the faster the cadence. But in that cold, extreme wintertime fishing, it's a couple reels and Jerk, jerk, pause. And when I pause, I'm bowing back to it. 
I'm wanting to let that fall on a slack line. Counting my pauses. One, two, three, four. Start reeling. Jerk, jerk, pause. Just like fishing a jerk bait. And think about what that synthetic hair jig's doing, right? It's falling slow. You catch it at 10, you start reeling, it's coming straight, and you do, do, and then you pause it. And it's barely falling. It's so much more subtle than a jerk bait. If you fish pressured water where everybody's fishing a suspending jerk bait, all of a sudden you come through with this, they can't stand it. So it's that cadence, right? Boom, boom, pause. Boom, boom, pause. And I'm, I'm going to keep changing my rhythm. Every 10 or 20 cast, maybe one jerk with a longer pause. Maybe three jerks with a shorter pause until you find the cadence. I want you to really be a line watcher on this third technique, jerk and a hair jig, because a lot of the bites, as you pause it and you bow to it, you see that braid, that white braid go dunk. And when you see it go dunk, don't jack it. Do that same hook set. You're just stepping back and reeling into them. Just a real set, right? Unbelievable, that one, how many people don't fish a hair jig like a jerk bait with that synthetic, okay? Three great techniques with a hair jig. I promised you one last thing at the end, and I'm gonna give you another big little tip and a secret, and it's adding a little piece of broken soft stick bait on the shank of the hook. And dude, I carry, this is a little Max scent worm that was just laying in the bottom of my boat. Don't throw these away. You get a Ziploc or a little box, you can throw them in there. Also, you know, in my opinion, a soft plastic stick bait is the best for this. And I like the back segment of that soft plastic stick bait. This is just a Berkeley Powerbait General four inch straight black. And I like to cut off a segment that's about an inch, an inch and an eighth long. You can just bite it off, okay? And I'm gonna get that and I'm gonna add it to the hook shank on my hair jig, okay? So let me fold this marabou back and I'll show you. There's our little hair jig hook. And when I thread that on that hair jig, I'm gonna do it so that end that I cut or bit off, the blunt end, the, the end that you know we chopped is gonna go on that hook first. And I'm just gonna thread it on there so that when it comes out, that little pointy end of that soft stick bait is sticking toward the back, okay? So I know what you're saying. Why did we do that? What do we need that on a hair jig for? It doesn't matter, it's, it's subtle, it's, you can't even see it. But we did it for two reasons. And the first one is to add weight to that little light hair jig. Look at that, that's a 16th of an ounce. But now the soft stick bait has salt in it, it has bulk, so it's really gonna let us cast it a lot further. But the second thing, and just as important, look what it did to the hackle. It does this on synthetic, it does it on marabou. If you're using rabbit or deer, it'll do the same thing. That addition of that soft stick bait pushed up against the top of that hackle makes it puff out. And you're actually gonna get more lifelike action in the water, right? It's gonna help that hair stick out, help that hair pulsate and act more natural. So keep your broken soft stick baits, thread a little piece on there. I use that on all three of those techniques we talked about, right? We talked about a hair jig on the bottom, barely moving it. We talked about a hair jig steady reeled right through the water column. And then last, we talked about jerking a hair jig with long pauses. Man, I know it was long winded, but if you're struggling in extreme conditions, dead of the winter, cold water, even in hot water in the summer, if you're struggling with your normal finesse presentations, try a hair jig, create a hair jig box. I promise you, this is gonna bail you out when nothing else will. Listen to me, I hope you liked this week's In the Shop talking about hair jigs for extreme conditions. If you like what you're watching here, do me a favor, pause real quick, mash that subscribe button right down there. 
We're gonna get great content to you every single week. If you're already subscribed, do me a favor, call your buddy, text your buddy, tell him about Mike Iconelli fishing on our YouTube channel. We're gonna have great secrets and tips to you every single week. See you later, try that hair jig. I promise you, it'll bail you out too.